What's going on today, dear people? Thank you for joining us again on This Won't Last at All. Today's episode, I've decided it's going to be an Easter episode. Uh, and <clears throat> in honor of Easter, uh, even if you don't celebrate, it's a, it's a very colorful and fun uh, holiday to at least observe and look at and see how absolutely ridiculous it is. Uh, so uh, I've decided to pick out three cocktails that we're going to give a shot here. Um, one is going to be a, an attempt at replicating the flavor of heaps. Uh, the other one is going to be a spin off of a mule using carrot juice. Uh, and the last one is going to be a shot. It's the first time I've done that on this uh, on this video series, unless you count the Irish car bomb, which uh, is a very big shot, uh, but not really like a traditional shot. Anyways, uh, since I have so many of them, uh, we're going to get started uh, with the first one. I'm going to try out the peep this. Now, the peep this. Found a recipe for this on the Town and Country website. Uh, I believe actually Paul um, found that one and, and sent it to me. Uh, this is an interesting looking recipe. Uh, it involves some tequila rose. Uh, this is not the one that they recommend. They recommend Codigo 1530 Rosa Tequila. I couldn't find that, so I got the tequila rose. Um, I don't know if that makes any difference because I think this stuff is actually kind of not super high quality, but uh, we use that. Uh, it's going to call for three quarters ounce of lemon juice, uh, three quarters ounce of agave nectar, uh, four raspberries, and an egg white. So this is going to be a dry shake drink. So uh, when we make this, we're going to go ahead and get our ingredients, and we're going to put them in our shaker, but we're not going to add ice. So first thing up, we're going to get our shaker. Let's start measuring out our ingredients. So first up, we're going to get our tequila rose. Ounce and a half of that now. Now I've never actually had this, and I always kind of wanted to try it because it looks like it would be delicious. It looks like uh, strawberry Nesquik, and to be completely honest with you, it absolutely smells like strawberry Nesquik. Maybe a hint of alcohol. So I'm gonna go ahead and give it a try. The taste is quite a bit different. Although definitely it does have that strawberry nesco kind of flair to it. Um, it's not necessarily bad, but it's... I don't think the alcohol is particularly high quality. Um, a lot of heat to it. And uh, the, I'm assuming it's actually tequila. It says strawberry cream liqueur. So I'm going to assume it is, in fact, tequila, that they didn't use some other kind of neutral base liqueur for it. Uh, because it does have that sort of aftertaste, that weird savory element that... Um, Tequila typically has agave specifically, but um, it's unique. That's interesting. I would say I would like to try maybe if there are some more high quality versions available of it. Wouldn't mind giving them a shot. All right, next up we're going to do three quarters of an ounce of agave nectar. Done. I'm doing that before the lemon juice so that I can rinse it out so the agave nectar sticks a little bit. Uh, agave nectar used to be one of those things that is uh, hard to come by, but lately, you know, it's uh, something you find in the stores anywhere. Because uh, a lot of people who are uh, more lo low glycemic, you know, diabetic and such like that, even some, I think there's some benefit for gluten intolerant people too. Uh, but they go with the agave. So, easy to find. You find it in any of your grocery stores. Anyways, next, three quarter ounce of lemon juice. Lemon juice, obviously, if you can use your freshly squeezed, use your freshly squeezed. I'm going to go with Lakewood. Uh, and it's just good, in my opinion. Next, we're going to do something I forgot to say at the first. is four raspberries. All right, once we've got all that in, we're going to add our egg white. Because the egg white will curdle. If you add it to one. Obviously, you can get an egg and you can strain out the white if you want them. I just use the egg. I've already made egg whites. And they uh, say that the it's an ounce of liquid egg white should be the equivalent of one egg white. Uh, we've got all of our ingredients, and then we're going to go ahead and give it a vigorous shake. And uh, remember to keep it tight, because uh, when you do a dry shake like this, it does tend to create a little bit of a compression, some gas on it. So, now we're going to add our 
ice and shake it again. And I should have mentioned beforehand, uh, we're going to go ahead and rim it uh, with, sh with sugar. We happen to have gotten ourselves some pink sugar. So we're going to do that now before we shake. Although ideally, you should uh, already rim your glass before you start the mixing process. So for this one, they got it in a coupe. I don't have any coupes, so I'm going to use a margarita glass. Let's start by rimming it with the agave syrup. Once you get the agave syrup on there, then you go ahead and you rim it with the sugar. We got our glass room. We're gonna shake our whole oh, shake. Now the instructions are to double strain. Uh, I do not have a fine strainer, so I'm just gonna use my hawthorn. So I would definitely say that. If you have a coupe, use a coupe, because uh, coupes tend to be a little bit smaller than margarita glasses. And by the looks of it, this probably would have made it just to the top. Uh, if you don't have a coupe, if you don't have a margarita glass or rocks glass, it'll work just fine. Anyways, that's all about presentation, which if you're not, if you're only serving yourself, it doesn't really matter. But if you're uh, serving some guests, obviously, yeah, you want to try to get that presentation done. Anyways, the last direction they had for this was to uh, put dried raspberry powder on top of it. Dust it, half of it. I do not have dried raspberry powder. I'm not going to get dried raspberry powder. <laughs> but that's a good, uh, it's a, it'd be a fun thing to do. Put it on top. Uh, you could just do a little, you know, a couple dashes of your, of your pink sugar if you really wanted. But, uh, completely unnecessary. Holy, uh, holy extra. All right, so now we're going to try it. There is one more thing they did. is suggest garnishing with a beet, but I hate beets, so we're not going to do that. It smells lovely. That is delicious. <laughs> mm, that is creamy and frothy on the mouthfeel, and it is uh, very tart, but also quite sweet. Uh, it does have a, that raspberry kick to it. Um, no doubt from the fresh raspberries, using those actually probably would be better than using liqueur or using the juice. Um, even if you strain them out, I mean, you still get that just extra punch to it. and. Um, I'm not gonna lie, that's pretty damn delicious. It's hard to describe exactly what it tastes like. It, it just tastes like candy. Um, it doesn't really taste like a beet. <laughs> doesn't really have any kind of marshmallow feel to it. I imagine if you wanted to get closer to actually tasting like a beet, it would probably be probably vanilla. Vanilla and maybe with vodka or something like that. But Oh my. That is delicious. Uh, <laughs> uh, I think the agave really helps out in just sweetening it, but like agave has such a different flavor to it uh, from like sugar or even honey as a sweetener. It has almost like a, a burnt taste to it. I don't mean like that in a negative way. Almost like a burnt caramel type deal. Not like harsh, but like just roasty. Um, I don't know if there's really anything to that. Uh, I don't think there's ever roasted in the process, but uh, just it has a different flavor and uh, it works very well as a sweetening ingredient for that reason. This thing is delicious. Highly recommend you try it. I think it's probably pretty low ABV because even to start, the Gila Rose is only 15%. So, I mean, you could have plenty of them if you wanted. All right, uh, on to the next drink. Now that we got that delicious, uh, but admittedly very sweet drink out of the way, uh, it's time for something a bit more traditional. Uh, so this one I looked up, um, and uh, it seemed very interesting. Uh, to simplify the drink, it's basically a mule with carrot juice. It, was, it seemed interesting enough to me to, to give it a shot. It didn't seem like something that was like too outlandish, but also it was different enough. So I was, I'm, I'm kind of excited to try it out. Uh, so we're going to give it a try here. So this one calls for a quarter ounce of simple syrup. We're going to do that. Calls for half an ounce of lime juice. 
three quarters of an ounce of carrot juice. Now, obviously, you could get yourself a juicer and make fresh carrot juice if you wanted. But who wants to do that? So, <laughs> and you know, grocery stores do, grocery stores do sell uh, specifically carrots for juicing. They probably have a little bit higher water content, so they actually will uh, leave out a bit more juice than traditional carrots will. Uh, however, in this case, I just got the liquid pure carrot juice. There's also carrot juice in, in ready to drink forms available for purchase. So, whichever one suits you best, ultimately. Three quarters of like carrot juice. Carrot juice is always been kind of an interesting flavor to me because uh, it's got this thing between vegetable and sweet that's uh, very unique to carrots, I think. Uh, but anyway, it's, uh, it's different. So I thought it'd be fun to use it in a drink. And when I saw that one, I was like, man, let's give that a try. Anyways, your next ingredient is two ounces of vodka. Meaning that this would be a Russian mule or a Moscow meal, I should say, um, with carrot juice, uh, as opposed to any of the other versions of the meal, <clears throat> which if you watched the video on the meal uh, about a couple weeks back, you will remember that the nomenclature of the meal depends on the origin of the spirit they use. As you have seen, this is a new vodka, uh, and it's also one that I never tried, so we're going to give this a try. very clean vodka. Um, it definitely doesn't have the typical uh, astringent effect that a lot of normal vodkas, uh, regular vodka, regular vodka, all vodkas, regular vodka. Anyways, this is supposed to be a little better. Uh, it was highly rated, it was like 92 or something like that. It's French wheat vodka. I tend to go with French vodka over Russian just because it does have um, a bit more palatability to it. Um, and it's, it's hard to really describe vodka because it by nature doesn't really have an awful lot of flavor to it um, but I, I tend to find that the more astringent vodkas tend to be Russian and the sweeter and more subtle smooth vodkas tend to be French that's not to say that it's 100% every single time going to be those results but it's just the experiences that I've had so once you have everything together uh, you're going to shake it Thirty seconds ish should be should be fine. Then you're gonna put it in your glass. Whatever glass you want to use, you can use a highball, you can get a Ross glass. Right now I'm gonna use a Ross glass. You do want to make sure that you have room to top off with your ginger beer though. So you're gonna to top it off with your ginger beer. Today I am using Cutwater Mixes ginger beer. Never had it before. Uh, so I figured I'd try it out and uh, we'll give it a taste right now. It's good. Uh, it's uh, a little bit more subtle. Um, <clears throat> definitely doesn't have that tickle that I get on a lot of the ginger beers where sometimes it's like it'll tickle my nose a bit as I'm drinking it and it actually it'll sometimes make me sleep. Uh, but uh, it also isn't tickling sweet, so that's something else. Anyways, pop it up. And the last thing that you're going to do is you're going to go ahead and come and give it a uh, little decoration. Uh, they recommend that you use a carrot peel. I'm going to see if I can get sword. So we to Yeah, there you go. Back up a little bit here. Give it a taste. very subtle. Um, that's probably just fine. Uh, I probably should have used a more potent ginger beer. Didn't know anything about this one, but it is very, very muted in my opinion. Uh, it's not bad. It's just, uh, I usually go with Gosling's Gosling. There's quite a bit of punch and sweetness to it. 
Uh, this one really doesn't. a little bit, maybe add a little bit more carrot juice, um, maybe get a different ginger beer, uh, probably, uh, but the carrot juice is definitely very hard to detect, uh, but anyway, that's good enough to give it a try, I recommend it, uh, let's go to another one, okay, last but not least, we're gonna do a shot, <clears throat> what shot are we gonna do, I haven't really ever done actual shots on the, on the show before, so, uh, this is the first one. Curious choice, I understand. But uh, honestly, uh, I think this is going to be a lot of fun, so I wanted to give it a try. Uh, this is a Cadbury Cream Egg shot. Now, uh, the long story short of this shot is it's basically um, it's, uh, it's basically white washing. Like, legitimately, that is the recipe. But you just you take the Cadbury Cream Egg and you hollow it out, and you make the white Russian, which is equal parts milk, vodka, uh, and uh, coffee record and you uh, mix it all together. The, the way that is described, described here is uh, to use a pitcher and stir it like that. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to do a single single serve recipe and I'm going to change out the milk for ice cream because uh, making it a bit more like a mud slice. But I think that that would work better in the show. Anyway, so I'm going to try this out. So I bought a couple different Cadbury cream eggs just in case I screw one up. But the idea is to cut it open and then scoop out the inside. I'm also going to do a dry shake on this first and then uh, add ice into it. one half an ounce each vodka um, Irish cream and coffee before. in this case I need to press a little bit. anyway we're going to dry shake this then we're going to shake it with that so the part that I probably won't show you is that I did have to uh, scrape out some of the dead break from the side because it's kind of sticking so be aware of that easily over a minute uh, so I would say you definitely have to shake it a lot to get it to incorporate there's still some sticking to it but uh, as much as you're willing to do barely gonna be happy. anyways once there you got yourself your shot ready to go you can shoot it and then uh, chase it by eating the chocolate cheers Pitcher method, 
where it actually makes the ingredients into a pitcher and it serves multiple because it takes a lot of effort just to do it for one um, and again <clears throat> if you got them ready to go you can just serve them out but it took a lot of time to make that <laughs> so this is not a one person drink but uh, if you want to show off to your friends you want something neat and cool definitely I would give that a shot now the interesting thing I see on here is that they left some of the foil around it and use that to hold up the eggs not a bad idea um, I just happen to have this thing lying around in the kitchen so I use that and it's just a big enough top to accommodate the egg uh, but you gotta figure out something to keep them standing <laughs> this is I guess kind of the same responsibility you have during a normal party anyways uh, that's gonna do it for this episode it was quite a bit of fun hope you gave it a lot of try my favorite one from this one was this so give that one a shot for sure all the rest of them were acceptable they're fine anyway uh, thank you for joining us on this one last call we appreciate you watching us uh, and uh, check out the podcast this one last podcast google us check it out on facebook check it out on twitter check it out on all those social media X uh, sites give us a follow uh, shout out in the comments what you like about the episode or any ideas for the future uh, just forwarded everything over to IGTV this one will probably go to IGTV too hopefully I'll have it done and edited by Sunday just in time for reason uh, <clears throat> Go ahead and check out our partnership with uh, brightswimmer.com. Uh, brightswimmer.com, uh, they make luxury swimwear for the every person. Uh, if you use our code at checkout, TWL25, you will get 25% off your order. So check out brightswimmer.com, use your code TWL25. So that's going to do it. Uh, let me know what you think about the music that I've been making on this. Uh, I might try to make some more themes. I made a different one for the St. Patrick's Day theme. It was very rushed, but let me know what you think if you listen to it at all. Well.